Hello out there in the community, it's Chris, it's the Mad Respect. How's everybody doing out there? Um, it's that time of the month again. I'm gonna head out to the library right after this video and possibly hit the LCS. So uh, I got a bunch of stuff I need to take back that I finished reading during uh, January and first part of February. So here it is. And I have my special guests here, uh, my grandson Traveler. Hopefully he doesn't bother us too much during this video. Alright, first one is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, this was a horror book. It was listed as one of the buzziest horror novels of uh, 2020. Uh, and the thoughts in the community, or the booktube community, were that it was just a little too boring. But it, it flowed really good for me. I've read two books by Stephen Graham Jones now, and they both have a real... Uh, I guess they work for me as far as the, what do you call it, hmm, as far as the prose goes, the prose, it hits me in the right place, and it moved pretty quickly for me, it was a lot different than I was expecting, there was three parts to the book, a prologue, chapter, part one and part two, and at the end of each part, a character dies, so it's kind of shocking in that way. But very good. I would recommend The Only Good Indians. Next is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Uh, when I got it, I saw right here it says Reese's Book Club, which immediately turned me off. And it took me a long time to actually pick up and start reading it because I read the first Reese's Book Club novel, which is something in Dark, Dark Woods, which just wasn't very good. It wasn't written very well. wasn't constructed very well. It seemed like, like a first-time author and just, just bad. But this one, actually, it still uses the same uh, storytelling tick from, uh, or shtick, the same storytelling shtick from Gone Girl, multiple characters per chapter. Each chapter is from a different character's perspective. But it didn't really have a lot of the unreliable narrator uh, trope. It was just them telling the story from the past to the present. So... And it was pretty interesting. It didn't have a super shock ending. But for a Reese's Book Club book, Reese's Witherspoon, for a Reese's Witherspoon Book Club book, I'd say I would recommend it. And then we got a whole bunch of The Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 7, 2099, Volume 8, Threats and Menaces, Volume 9, Sins Rising. I'm going to take a look at the very back of Sins Rising because I'm going to get the... I'm going to get uh, Volume 10 when I go to the library today. Uh, volume 7, 2099, uh, give or take. It was it read pretty well, but I didn't really care about what was going on. It was like, like Spider-Man 2099 comes back from the future for particularly no reason, I guess. I guess he helps create this fortune-telling device or something. But other than that, there's really no reason for him to come back to interact with Peter. And then Dr. Doom attacks New York. That's about all that happens in there. Threats and Menaces. Uh, about two-thirds of it is drawn by Otley. So I don't know if this is the last Otley art on the series. But it was a three-part story with the boomerang. Which was kind of cute. Because it was about a big monster. who's was really a small monster who misses his owner who died. And then they fight the vermins and stuff. And it, it was okay. I'd say... But out of the three, I'd say this one probably read the quickest. And then Sin is Rising. I like the story matter, or whatever, the, the plot a lot. Like, what it was about, it was good, but it was kind of boring to read through. Uh, and at the end, it looks like uh, the army of Sin is coming after the Green Goblin. So, let's see how that works. All right, these next two by Ed, Bra Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. We got Pulp and we have Bad Weekend. They both kind of cover the same subject matter comic books, interestingly enough. This is about a like a 50s pulp artist, actually a 30s pulp, a 30s pulp artist who does a western strip. And he's being pushed out and having younger creators uh, draw his strips because the pulps own the characters, even though he created them. And this is Bad Weekend. This is about this guy here. He's coming back to a convention in the 80s, early 90s. And he was, like, say, like a Jack Kirby or Bob Kane figure who was really 
like a what do you call it like a innovator of the innovator of the hobby you know so uh but he's a real piece of shit and he doesn't want to do any of the panels or the signings so he just wants to go and drink and he's looking for a lost piece of art and so they're both pretty good someone said this was their favorite book of 2019 I'd say it's not really up there with my favorites of this year, of 2021, since I just read it. But maybe, maybe as I think about it, it might get up higher on that list. And then, but Pulp, Pulp, I would say, is firmly in my favorite reads of this year so far because he needs money so that he's going to die of a heart attack soon. So he needs money so that his uh, girlfriend is taken care of. Because she kind of stopped him from being a, a rotten drunk, etc. Uh, later in life. And in, in the 1800s, he was actually a, a outlaw cowboy robbing banks and stuff. So one of the lawmen who was after him towards the end finds him and says, I want to do a score with you. We're going to rip off these Nazis and they have like tons of money. But it was really, he just wanted to get ledgers to shut down the Nazis for the FBI but he does give him a penance of like $8,000 in a fully paid house so now his wife's taken care of but then he goes to thank the guy because it turns out that they did uh, take down some of the Nazis he didn't think that was going to happen and he's like well I gotta go at least like say props he took down the Nazis but then his friend died so he goes in and talks to the girl who'd been being beaten she's like oh my boyfriend they beat the shit out of him and threw him down the stairs. And he just says, just tell me his name. And then goes on the, what do you call it? He goes on the ultimate sacrifice revenge mission to kill off all these Nazis. So that's how that one ends, but it was pretty good. It affected me. Uh, Immortal Hulk, volume seven, Hulk is Hulk. This is Hulk versus this crazy dude, the Zemno from the Magic Planet. Uh, it's basically a mind control thing, and you find out that Rick Jones is actually the leader, or Rick Jones is pu the leader is puppeting Rick Jones from hell, uh, and at the end he uh, forces Bruce to read, uh, reach uh, the action or whatever they call it, like gamma explosion, and he kills a bunch of people, and that's how this one ends. So I'm looking forward to the next volume. Fantastic Four, Point of Origin, and Empire. Point of Origin is basically uh, a semi-retcon on the Fantastic Four origin. You find out that they were actually going to a planet when they went through the radiation waves that gave them their powers. And then years and years later, uh, they retire the ship that uh, the shields didn't work at the Smithsonian, so Reed and Johnny recreate the recreate the ship with the best shielding and make it through the the, the radiation fields into uh, land on the planet, and the planet has known they were coming the whole time and thinks they're invading aliens this whole time, and now they know they're the Fantastic Four and have powers with them and monitoring them the whole time, and then by the end of it you find out that the guy who uh, on the planet who's been monitoring them also uh, souped up the radiation waves so it wasn't Reed's fault that the ship got bombarded it was this guy on the planet's fault so he actually created the Fantastic Four and Reed doesn't have to feel guilty about what happened to Ben and stuff anymore although Ben's like Ben's Ben's rubbed it off a long time ago you know Ben's cool with it but Reed's always been tortured by that uh, and then the next volume is uh, Empire this is basically the main four Fantastic Four go off into space with the Avengers because I haven't read the the event, and then uh, Franklin and Valeria are left on Earth, and they get sort of getting attacked by the tree, the tree uh, army or whatever, so they uh, set off the alternate Fantastic Four, uh, <coughs> alternate Fantastic Four, whatever you call it, call call the other uh, you call it reserve members, which is. The ones from that uh, Walter Simpson art, Adams, uh, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, and Ghost Rider. And only uh, Spider-Man and Wolverine show up. And then 
So they were fighting off the trees, and at one point, Valeria and Franklin use holograms to make themselves look like Hulk and Ghost Rider. So that was kind of funny. But overall, I'm enjoying the Fantastic Four on this lot. Family Tree by Jeff Lemire and Phil Hester. Uh, pretty good. I kind of knew the spoiler that two issues into volume two that the girl actually turns into a full tree. So that probably would have affected me more had I not known anything about this when I read it. But uh, for Lemire, I'd say I, I rank this just slightly below Gideon Falls and way below like Black Hammer. But for just a good, decent horror story, if that's what you're looking for, I think a lot of people would like this. Plunge by Joe Hill and Stuart Eminem. This was fucking amazing, man. This was like, like an 80s horror movie that wasn't made, you know? Uh, it was quite cool. Uh, even though this was an 80s horror movie, it does take place in 2019. But uh, basically there's a ghost ship that's been missing for 20 years that suddenly shows up half submerged near Russia. And the company who sent the ship out originally hires a bunch of uh, deep uh, deep sea drillmen uh, to go and find out what's inside the ship. And when everyone gets there, they find out that the crew is still alive after 25 years. Uh, they haven't aged a day and they're blind with no eyes and they kind of have psychic powers. But then it turns out they're all infected by these kind of things, these wormy guys who are aliens who want to uh, basically fertilize an egg down at the bottom of the ocean which will basically wake up Cthulhu. Which they, they kind of took away the Cthulhu aspect, so it's basically the same thing, a giant uh, sea monster god. And then at the end, the main character makes the ultimate sacrifice to get rid of him. Uh, a lot of spam in the can, and pretty much everyone dies, so it was pretty good. V for Vendetta by Alan Moore and David Lloyd. Uh, I saw the movie long ago, uh, so I knew kind of the middle twist where Evie is in the prison, but it's really just V who has her in the prison. But overall, V is what a hell of a lot more sadistic in this book, and he just kills and kills and kills. And at the end, they have the part where He's like, he's like, I want you to take off my mask and see my face and then forget my face. And then she's thinking about it. Maybe I should never take it off. But then they show her go and take it off. And then she smiles, like just like he does, and then sees V. But I'm thinking possibly V was, uh, when she was in prison, they had a woman sending her letters about how she was going to die in prison. And he said that was his uh, next cellmate. But I believe V might have been that woman. I'm not sure though, because she, when she took the mask off, it seemed to all click, and then she had the big V smile on her face. So that is my, uh, what do you call it? my interpretation. It could be the woman was V. Han Solo, Imperial Cadet. This is fun. Uh, this is basically Han. If he would have stayed with the uh, Imperials, he, the Rebels would have had a problem because he's just that good of a pilot. And, but since he's just that insubordinate and smart ass, he never moved up the ranks. And this one, you think he's gonna escape and uh, start looking for Kira like he does in the Solo movie, but this all takes place before Solo when he actually helps another cadet escape and find her family. Because as much of a scoundrel as he's meant to be, he really does have a heart. Captain Marvel Volume 2 and 3. Volume 2 is Falling Star and Volume 3 is The Last Avenger. Um, volume 2 took me a long time to get through. It was very boring. Uh, story was okay. It's about basically this other Kree villainess uh, creates Star to siphon the power from Captain Marvel and discredit her on Earth as an alien so everyone hates her. And then Star kind of breaks bad after she gets her powers and tries to kill everybody and then Captain Marvel has to stop her. And then Captain Marvel The Last Avengers. Last Avengers, this was excellent. This was another, this was the Supreme Intelligence mixed with another alien who wants to uh, make sure the Kree are going to be the dominant species 
So he's going to make a super Avenger, but he puts kind of like a symbiote costume on uh, Carol here, or an alien costume. It's not really a symbiote, but it's another alien thing that controls her. And he can hear everything she does, and he says, go down to Earth and bring me the heads of all the Avengers. So she has to do that. So they show her killing Thor at the start, and then they show her killing uh, Tony Stark. And then you find out she's hiding the real Avengers and using these uh, government-created Avengers clones that she was she had asked the facility be nuked from orbit, but the government lied and they were still there. So, but then they eventually all team up at the end and defeat him. But uh, this one read super fast, like great layouts. Uh, the way the story was, it was just like two different writers, you know. I mean. This is the volume I think Kelly Thompson really comes into her own on Captain Marvel. Looking forward to the next one, which is also waiting for me at the library. Alright, Bitterroot, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, family Business and Rage and Redemption. Very good, very good. Uh, you, I guess it would help if you were African American to, uh, to understand every little nuance in here. But uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's more like it's almost like a fantasy horror kind of uh but definitely very good uh they're basically monster hunters but they're they have like a healing route that can change the monsters back into the humans they were because it's just basically monsters corrupting the souls of a human based on their hate so uh and like half the family died five years before the volume starts and the other half is angry at the other half of the family but then they all have to come back together to combat uh, this evil force named Adro and force her back. And so that's the best they can do is force the evil back into the, the limbo land. Uh, and in the limbo land, time passes faster than in uh, Earth time. But uh, so there's volume three starting in uh, March. So I'm looking forward to uh, checking that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it floppies or just hold out. But... I'm going to read it, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 by Al Ewing and Cabal, right? yeah, Juan Cabal, uh, pretty good, uh, the first two issues are like, uh, gods are take, trying to take over everything, so half the, half the Guardians don't want to do it, and Rocket and Peter do, so Rocket and Peter take off and meet the other heroes who want to try to stop it and they do stop it but Peter makes the ultimate sacrifice and dies and then Rocket comes back and he's dead to the rest of the group uh, Gamora, Drax and Groot he's dead to them and then there's two moon dragons which I'm not sure if there's not sure I need to read to fully kind of understand that maybe the Donny Cate stuff I didn't read the second half of the Donny Cate stuff uh, but basically the second half is them on like a planet where there's this groundhog guy who Rocket ripped off in the past and they want the other half of the Guardians of Gamora to murder Rocket uh, but then they end up uh, stopping the groundhog's uh, evil power to suck all the life from the planet and it kind of ends there with them kind of at a stalemate but they've beaten the groundhog guy so I don't know if they're going to be all friends again in volume 2 but we'll see when I get it there's Dog Days by Cypress Matu and Remy Benjamin. And this was kind of just like a drama. It's about a guy who goes on a summer vacation. And but his wife has too much work and can't come with him, so he's alone with the kids. And their dog disappears on the first day of the trip. And the littler son is just going nuts about it. Uh, and then a couple of days later, he finds the dog uh, hit in the street, but he just kind of like hides it. He doesn't want his son to be upset that the dog's dead, but the whole trip, he's just getting more and more psychologically tortured by his son. Where's the dog? Where's the dog? He goes to the pound to look for it. He does this and that. He meets the, the neighbor girl up the street that he knew when he was in high school, and they eventually have an affair. And then uh, there's this group of... Uh, hunter people who are using like blue meat to poison uh, pests but the dogs have been eating it and that's how all these dogs have been dying and disappearing 
So then it almost gets blamed on this guy, but then they find out after he gets beaten by the hunters that it was the hunters. And at the end, he's deciding whether he should go back and reconcile with his wife or stay with his new girlfriend. Batman Detective Comics, greetings from Gotham. Uh, this is by Tomasi. Uh, there's a, a one-issue Joker story in here. There's a two-part Spectre story in here with Kyle Hotzart, which is excellent to look at. And then there's a three-part Deathstroke story at the end where it's uh, Batman without any of his uh, costume or tools having to take down uh, Deathstroke in like, the jungle. Uh, just hand-to-hand -hand with no tools or anything. So that was a cool story. And last we have... Thor the Devourer King by Donny Cates and Jeff, not Jeff Shaw. Donny Cates and Nick Klein, the Devourer King. This uh, lives up to the hype. I've heard about this all summer and fall on the community that it was really good. And I knew all about the Black Winter, but he dies at the end. But I didn't know what the Black Winter was in this paw, but he was, uh, he was pretty cool. He was supposed to be a space god, I guess. But then he can be depowered by... I guess like how virtuous you are or something. I think it was something like that. But it was cool that Thor had to cast sentence on uh, Galactus and then he uses his helmet as the new world tree or whatever, as the base of the new world tree. It was all pretty cool. And I have all the floppies for the next uh, like 7 through 11 now, so I'm definitely going to read those. I'm not going to wait for a trade. I'm going to read those here sooner or later. All right, that's what I got done at the library. So, like I said, I'm going to take off after this, head out to the library, possibly the LCS, and uh, in a little while we'll get you another video uh, showing you what I picked up there, that haul. So, let me know if you guys read any of this. Leave a comment down below, if so, what you thought of anything. And also, hit that notification button after you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. All right, take care everybody, stay safe. We'll see you in the next one.